What are the seven things that you must do when starting a print-on-demand business or before starting a print-on-demand business? That is exactly what I'm gonna tell you in this video and we're gonna get straight into it. But before we get straight into it, I just wanna say, please, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I can tell that a lot of the viewers, maybe 60 to 70% of the viewers that are watching these videos aren't necessarily subscribed and it will mean the world to me if you actually subscribe. I am so, so close to 7,000 subscribers. So now that I've said, that piece, let's just get straight into this video. The seven things that you must do before starting a print on demand business, what are they? Well, to start with, you want to make sure that when you have your business, when you have your design out there, you only want a maximum of four colors, okay? Now, a lot of the time you see on these, these print on demand businesses that they have like 10 or 20 or 30 colors of basically every color under the sun and, and their designs on that color t-shirt. Now, you don't necessarily want that because, ah. Uh, we get more comfortable here because you don't necessarily want that amount of colors because you get this thing called analysis paralysis which is where someone comes to your page and there are so many options they just decide to choose none and that is no good for anyone so the reason why you want four and the reason why i think four is, is the pivotal amount of colors is because you've got black and you've got white two neutral colors that pretty much applies to any gender and everyone likes it and then you want a boy color and a girl color and i know this is stereo typing right now, but for example, you might want to go for a pink and then a blue. And I know it's stereotyping, don't hate me, I'm not some whatever, but my point is you want to go for the black and a white and then two colors, okay? And if you really want, you can go for one neutral color, okay? Like a light blue or something like that, all right? Make sure that you have some money set aside. I suggest having about $200 set aside for two reasons. Reason number one is you need that money if you're going to be running any sort of advertisements on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or any of these platforms, you need to have some money. So set aside some money when starting this business. And reason number two is that sometimes these print on demand companies will charge you separately. So a lot of the time, what do I mean by that? A lot of the time when you get a sale on print on demand, let's say you sell your t-shirt for $20, a lot of the time like with Teespring, they won't take money out of your bank account, they will just deduct the cost of the t-shirt from the profit that you just got. So if you got $20 for the t-shirt and it costs $7, they will take seven off it and they will just send you 30 instead of sending you 20. However, some companies will send you the entire 20 and then deduct off a credit card or a debit card or whatever the cost of the actual t-shirt. So make sure that you have a connected credit or debit card that actually has some money in it if you're planning on using one of those platforms. That is super important, okay? That's why I said about 100 to $200 just to get yourself started because the most important thing is you're gonna be seeing money coming in, right? So it doesn't matter if they're charging you as long as your money's coming in. That's why you don't need to have $1,000 set aside, but you do need to have a bit of money set aside for those initial sales. This is a really big one, okay? You've got to check the trademark and copyrights, all that kind of stuff. And let me just quickly explain to you what this all means. So you've got trademarkia.com, which is where you can check if a design or a, a something is trademarked and you can't use it, for example, don't go around using a Nike logos or Adidas logos, whatever you may think is allowed, it's not. Another example is sports teams, NFL teams, you can't be using them, or Marvel characters, stuff like this where people think, oh, it's okay to use it, especially if I design the Iron Man t-shirt myself. No, it's not okay. You cannot use those. And in terms of copyright, how does copyright work? Well, you can't really go and check if something is copyrighted. However, if there is a design out there that design is copyrighted by default, okay? So if someone has a t-shirt that says, like my, like the one I did the other day, Pug Life with the three dogs, if once I post that design, I don't know if that design's already out there, but let's say it's not. Once I post that design, that design is then copyrighted. Someone else can go and use the same concept, like use the, the same one like Pug Life with different font, different logo, different animals, different kind of pug on the picture. You can do that, right? you just can't copy it exactly. So they can't literally download my design, upload it and think that that's okay to sell it because that will be copyright infringement and you do not want to be caught in that because Teespring or Amazon or Redbubble, any of these websites will just take your listing down and it will just be a headache for you and a waste of advertising money. A really cool one is you want to make sure, and this is number four by the way, you want to make sure that you're using lifestyle images. Okay, and what do I mean by lifestyle images? Well, when you're listing your t-shirt on, let's say you're listing it on Teespring, you're gonna have the classic mock-up style t-shirt that's just on all the designs where it's just like a flat t-shirt with the design on it. 
The reason you want lifestyle images is because it makes the product look so much more real, so much more genuine, and it brings it to life, hence lifestyle, right? It genuinely brings it to life. So when you're running a Facebook campaign or an Instagram campaign, better than just run with a picture of the t-shirt, you could run it with someone wearing the t-shirt, leaning up against a wall, or someone on a couch like this, just like, like this, wearing the t-shirt, whatever, like a model shot wearing the t-shirt. And if you're thinking, but that means I've got to buy the design, I've got to put it on a model, I've got to take photos, you don't have to do that because there is a website which I have used in the past and I know it's super popular called placeit.net, okay? Um, and on this website, you will be able to upload your design and it will give you thousands of real lifestyle mock-ups of people wearing them, men, women, all races, everything, wearing these t-shirts in all different forms of life, all different areas of life, some people working out, some people doing, watching TV, whatever it may be, and this will allow you to download all the images and just have genuine cool ads, and also not have the same as everyone else. If you if you just use the same mock-up everyone else is using, people are gonna start to realize, oh, this is just a fake mock-up. What does the actual T-shirt look like? Whereas when it's on someone in a real lifestyle photo, it looks like that's the actual T-shirt. You can, of course, go that extra mile and order the T-shirt and then model it yourself or get one of your friends to model it. That would be going the extra mile and that would look even more genuine, especially if you did videos of it, but it's not necessarily necessary and necessarily necessary. And it is obviously more money, more work, and probably too much effort for a design that you don't even know if it's going to be successful. But just to add, placeit.net also has a mock-up video. So you can put your design and it will it place it into videos of people wearing it, which is so cool. And the technology behind that is very, very cool. So definitely, definitely go check that out. Number five, don't go overboard with scarcity. So you know a lot of my videos, I talk about having some scarcity when you're designing your t-shirt. And that means basically saying limited edition or three days only, right? The issue is don't go overboard with this. If you have a website where you're selling 10 or 15 t-shirts and someone goes to visit your website and they see every single t-shirt says three days only or every single t-shirt says limited edition, it not only takes away from the scarcity, it actually does harm because people are like, okay, this guy is full of rubbish. He's just making up scarcity just to get a sale. So don't go overboard with scarcity. Maybe if you have 10 designs, have one or two t-shirts saying these are a limited limited edition run, unlike the others on the website. There will only be 100 printed. That is good scarcity. But again, if you are offering scarcity, try and stick to it. I know a lot of people put scarcity in as a sales tactic, and personally, I don't necessarily like that so much. So if you are gonna say something scarcity-wise, try and stick to it. If you say three days only, and then you relaunch, after three days or a week after the three days is up, then okay, it's, maybe you can then give a good valid reason for that, but don't say three days only and then keep it going for three weeks constantly, or don't say 100 units available and then sell 500 units. It's just not really ethical, but again, you do you. If that's what you wanna do, then 100%. Just don't go overboard with the scarcity. All right, what is number six? Don't go overboard with the product type. So we just talked about scarcity, not going overboard. Well, the same applies for the product type. Don't go overboard with it because again, we're talking about analysis paralysis. You don't want to give too many options. So if you have a design, don't launch it on a t-shirt, a mug, a rug, a tote bag, a jumper, a, a backpack, right? Don't go overboard with it. It's just unnecessary, right? You don't need to, you don't need to sell that many different variations of a product, right? You could pretty much just sell a t-shirt or just sell a tote bag or maybe a t-shirt and a hoodie, right? You don't need to have six or seven different variations of a product. It won't, it won't, it won't do you any good. Trust me on that. Number seven, the final thing you must be doing before starting your print on demand business. And this is the most important one, which is why I've left it to last, okay? It's the most important one. Just, you have to do this, right? What is it? Well, you have to research the niche on your chosen advertising platform before going and spending a lot of time finding designs, designing, uploading t-shirts, and actually advertising them, okay? So don't go and be like, don't do it this way around. This is not the right thing to do. I want to sell a, a pug t-shirt, okay. Let me design the pug t-shirt, let me find them. Uh, three days later, I've done all of that. Okay, now let's go to Facebook and research the pug audience. Will I get any sales from it? Big no-no, do not do that. That is catastrophic and you'll end up wasting so much of your time. Let's not do it. Do it this way around. Think, okay, I wanna try and sell a pug t-shirt. Let's go to Facebook. Let's look at the audience on Facebook. Is there an audience there? Let's look at Instagram. Is there an audience? YouTube, is there an audience? Can I sell it to these people? 
uh, yes, there is an audience. I can I this I can sell directly to this target market, and then I can go to this one, and then I can go to this sector. So people who are 18 to 20 who are married with a kid, that's quite young, who like pugs, all these direct good audiences I can target. Okay, brilliant. I've now done my audience. Let's go and try and find some design inspiration. Let's go and do a design. That is the way around you want to be running this business. If you run it the wrong way around, you will cause yourself a lot of headache, you'll cause yourself a lot of money wasting and just so much time wasting. So try and do it the way around that I just said with um, looking up the marketing first and then going to design a t-shirt. It's the same with anything in life. If I create a YouTube video, I should do research on that YouTube video beforehand, keyword research, content research, information research. I shouldn't start shooting the video and then go and try and find out all the information or finish shooting the video and then find out if people are even interested in listening to that kind of video, right? It makes a lot of sense. So those are the seven things you have got to be doing before starting your print on demand business. I hope that made sense. I tried to keep it very to the point and I didn't want to blab too much because I've been told that I blab a bit. So I wanted to just try and keep it straight to the point and I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, then please click that subscribe button. And if you're interested in print on demand, just a little bit, then please give this video a thumbs up. As Graham says, smash that thumbs up button. And uh, yeah, I will see you in tomorrow's video.